we started with diode circuits, then BJT and FET, and in the third unit we have seen operational amplifier. Okay, this is the last unit in which we'll discuss about the oscillators and power amplifier. So before going to start, let me tell you one thing. These two topics are not so much important as per the gate exam. Why? Because from power amplifier, last time we get the question in 1999. This was the last question we have get from this one. Is it okay? From oscillation we are getting after 2004, last time we get the question in 2015 and 2016 also. Two questions in the conjugative year, first in 2015 after 2004 and then in 2016. So these topics are not that much important, but we'll cover it thoroughly. Okay. So friends, <clears throat> in the third unit operational amplifier, we have discussed about so many problems. We have considered the operational amplifier with BJT, operational amplifier with diodes, Zener diode, simple diodes. We have seen input offset and CMRR and uh, slew rate related problems. There are so many problems we discussed. Why? Because the operational amplifier, I told you earlier also when I started the subject, the most important unit among all these is operational amplifier. If you will observe last year questions based on all these units, you will find that 60, 68 to 70 percent questions are asked from operational amplifier only. If they are asked, if there will be any question in the gate exam, definitely two or three questions will be from this background only. Operational amplifier. Okay. And this diode circuits. These are very important. So 70% will cover from this portion, 20% from diode and its application and only 10% will get from this. Because nowadays we are not getting questions from this portion. Okay. So this negative feedback we covered into this only. So this last unit comprised by oscillators and power amplifier. Okay. And I told you <clears throat> from the power amplifier we got last question in 1999. In oscillator we got two questions 15 and 16. Okay. So I'll cover the questions based on whatever we got there. Okay. So let me start the oscillator. What is the oscillator? Actually in the negative feedback we discussed how we connect the amplifier operational amplifier with negative feedback and what are the advantages of negative feedback when we will connect this. Okay. And when we were discussing about the positive feedback till now we have seen only one circuit and that circuit is schemic trigger. If you remember in the schemic trigger we were using positive feedback. Okay. So there are some advantages of negative feedback. That's why we, we are using negative feedback. Negative feedback stabilizes the gain. The same time it removes noise also. Okay. So we discuss about the advantages of negative feedback. But the oscillators and schemic trigger, they are totally based on the positive feedback only. Okay. So let me start the oscillators. Oscillators, as the name given, oscillator, it means we'll see some oscillation over here, right? So the kind of oscillation in this unit we'll discuss about. And uh, what is the power amplifier? Let me discuss briefly, then we'll start the session, okay? Friend, if I'm talking about the oscillation, let's take oscillators, see, okay? So in this, definitely we'll get some oscillation, like this. And we are interested to study this one only. That's why we have given them oscillation. Maybe. Let's check. And let me tell you about power amplifier also. Power amplifier is increase the power of the signal. You apply the signal. Let's consider the, you know, mic and a speaker. Here at the input stage, this is mic. Into this mic, Y is input. 
the voice will give to this mic what some internal gain is there over here and then at the output we'll get this in the form of amplified voice okay so this mic converted the voice into electrical signal by this entire circuit okay after that electrical uh, signal generated what we were doing is we were amplifying we were amplifying and again it's giving to speaker and speaker enlarging your your input so what we were doing we are doing over here we are amplifying its power so that's why we are we are calling it the power amplifier okay i think you got what i'm saying so let me start the oscillation so friends we have seen the closed loop system that is let's take it rs let's take it cs or output okay here this is the beta stage like this this is the feedback right and we here we are taking the positive feedback this a stage may be whatever for use for amplification it may be ft bjt op amp whatever it is and this beta is the circuitry consists by rc element lc element or r lc element l element c element on or maybe r elements okay this is the feedback element i can say right so for this circuit if you will find out the transfer function transfer function we call the output divided by input cs divided by rs if you will find out will get let me change pen over here you will get a divided by 1 minus a beta please observe this carefully in the negative feedback we were getting instead of this suppose you have negative we were getting a plus a beta okay that's why the gain was decreasing there because in the denominator we have 1 plus a beta this quantity is greater than 0 so definitely overall system or overall gain suppose o a o is the open loop gain and a f is the feedback gain so feedback gain will reduce itself means the a node in this case will reduce but but here in the case of positive feedback the gain always increases okay so this is the theoretical question they may ask in the examination because sometime they ask theoretical questions also so in this case if you will observe your transfer function you have is let's take a transfer function and it's a divided by 1 minus a beta this is entire related to oscillation now there is some condition what if this a beta is 0 i'm sorry what if this a beta is equal to 1 <clears throat> if this a beta is equal to 1 transfer function means v not i in equal to a 1 minus 1 equal to infinity because this is 0 1 by 0 or a by 0 is infinity what it means v not by infinity equal to v in infinite v not by infinity is equal to 0 what it means input is zero means without input we are getting oscillation if this condition occurs or by some means you can do this condition a beta equal to 1 what it means it means that your v in becomes zero means you are creating some system in which you don't required any input and he is giving sustain oscillation like this is this your oscillator yes this is oscillator okay but this is ideal oscillators in which input is zero or without input we are getting sustained oscillation continuously okay so <coughs> i'm sorry so this a beta is equal to 1 this is the condition we have seen if a beta is equal to 1 in this condition 
we do not need v in v in equal to zero and in this condition only at the output stage you will get sinusoidal oscillation or sustain oscillation like this is it okay but if a beta will be greater than one then what will happen then oscillation will increase in this way like this this oscillations continuously will increase like this this is the condition when a beta is greater than one okay so friends if a beta is less than one in this condition your oscillation will decrease and at some time you will get zero oscillation this is condition for a beta is less than one okay now let's come to the oscillation condition the oscillation condition says a beta should be one we have seen the circuit in which you connected a you connected b okay and this is the positive feedback no problem at all output let's take it v in so to make the product of these two terms equal to one is in our hand or not tell me beta is the factor which we can decide because this beta is made up by r c l or r c r l l c or r l c element so these r are constant values we can decide right yes the l and c both are frequency dependent component so oscillation is also the matter of frequency only they are responsible to do this okay friends so this a beta suppose we make one we call it the oscillation will occur in the system now is it okay and if you will see the phase difference the phase difference is zero over here what is the condition c <coughs> the condition is a beta should be one no phase is there means it's zero phase or 360 phase this condition if any system will satisfy this condition it will oscillate okay friends so this condition we call the barg hassan criteria later we discuss about this okay friends now we'll see the theory part we'll start the session this is the oscillator and power amplifier we'll introduce oscillator see power amplifier also in this unit okay so an oscillator may be described as a source of alternative and uh, alternating voltage okay continuously changing its value or it's we call the oscillation okay it is different than amplifier how an amplifier delivers an output signal whose waveform corresponds to input signal is it okay see the fundamental goal of amplifier is to deliver output which is same as input but but whose power level is higher but it needs some power okay the additional power contained in the output signal is supplied by the dc source used to bias the active device okay friends if someone will think how opm can do like this this magic that you are applying very little input it is going to multiply with 10 to the power 6 and it's amplifying the signal how friends it's totally depend on the biasing we are doing suppose we are doing plus minus 15 so this is the limit or range we are going to decide for the output the output can't exceed exceed this 15 and minus 15 so whatever we'll give we'll give, get in the output but for this study amplification study this is not our input our input is this our input is very small output is very large that's why we are we are calling it amplification but amplification is not possible without this this is the bias input bias okay so friends what he is saying over here an amplifier delivers an output signal whose waveform corresponds to input signal but whose power level is higher okay the additional power content in the output signal is supplied by the dc power source used to bias the active device is it okay the amplifier can therefore be described as an energy converter 
the amplifier is energy converter is it okay inside or at the input level the input has some energy output output has its own energy right overall the energy is constant how because at the input stage let's take it has some energy okay at the output stage amplified version it has that much of energy so this extra energy we are getting from the biasing is it okay so what he is saying over here it accepts energy from the dc power supply and converts into the energy at the singular single signal frequency the process of energy conversion is controlled by the input signal yes because based on input only we are getting output thus if there is a no input signal no energy conservation takes place i'm sorry this is conversion if no input no energy conversion and there is no output signal yes definitely if to any amplifier no input no output but as we discussed for the oscillation there will be output if input is zero okay we'll discuss about that the oscillator on the other hand requires no external signal to initiate or maintain the energy conversion process instead an output signal is produced as long as source of dc power is connected it require only dc power is it okay dc power means the biasing power i can say and there will be amplifier signal output and output this is the case of amplifier but in the oscillator there will be only dc dc will be there this will initiate the process will get output continuously without input this is the oscillation is it okay now what they are saying the oscillator on the other hand requires no external signal to initiate or maintain the energy conversion process instead an output signal is produced as long as source of dc power is connected figure shows the block diagram of an amplifier and an oscillator you can easily identify these two terms what what is the amplifier amplifier needs input to give output okay and this is the dc biasing okay what about oscillator for the oscillator the input is zero but still we have output okay so this is oscillator now oscillators may be classified in terms of their output waveform frequency range components or circuit configuration is it okay based on output or output waveform the range of frequency which components we are using there whether it's r l lc or r lc in the circuit or circuit configuration okay if the output waveform is sinusoidal it is called harmonic oscillator please remember this term they ma they may ask in one mark theory question what is the or what is the output of harmonic oscillator square wave sinusoidal wave like this okay so who is harmonic oscillator the output is sinusoidal okay okay fine otherwise it is called relaxation oscillator these two terms are very important harmonic and relaxation which includes in the relaxation it includes square wave triangular wave sawtooth wave form okay this is the relaxation oscillator is it okay friends but if your oscillator provides a sinusoidal oscillation it means it's harmonic oscillators oscillators may be classified in terms of their output waveform frequency okay this has done now if the output waveform is sinusoidal it is called the i think it's a repeated right okay let's take next one so an elementary sinusoidal oscillator is shown in the figure you can see over here the inductor this is the elementary okay the inductor and capacitor are reactive elements c one is capacitor one is inductor they are connected in this way and this is the switch 
Is it okay? Simple circuit. So what will happen? We'll check over here. So the inductor and capacitors are reactive elements. Yes, we know. That is, they are capable of storing energy. Okay. The capacitor stored energy in form of charges, static charge. And the inductor stored the energy in the form of magnetic field. Is it okay? The capacitor stores energy in its electric field. Whenever there is voltage across its plates and the inductor stored the energy in its magnetic field whenever current flow through it. Whenever you apply the voltage across the capacitor, it will store the charges. Whenever you apply the current to the inductor, it will produce magnetic field and store the energy in the form of magnetic field. Now the condition is both C and L are assumed to be low slaves. Let's assume that what you have done, you have connected inductor and one capacitor in this way. Of course, there is a switch. Okay. So you connect it in this way. Now what we are assuming, we are assuming that these two elements are suppose low slaves. There is a no lows. They don't have suppose reactive uh, Inductive reactants and capacitive reactants. Suppose XL and XC both are zero. Okay, they are purely inductive and capacitive circuit respectively. Energy can be introduced into the circuit by charging the capacitor. Let's consider that we charge the capacitor initially. The capacitor is fully charged. Now we are going to, we are going to close this switch. What will happen? Magic will happen. Right? How? See. Energy can be introduced into the circuit by charging the capacitor with a voltage V as shown in the figure. No problem at all. We charged it. As long as the switch S is open, C can't discharge. So I equal to zero. So your switch is open. This switch is open now. The switch is open. This I will be zero in the circuit. In the next moment, what you are going to do is, you are going to making it close. You are closing the switch. You are closing the switch and condition is you have charged your capacitor by voltage V. Now your path is completed. The current will start to flow. But as we know, the inductor always oppose the flow of current. Because initially if current is zero across it, okay, it T equal to zero plus time, it will oppose the change in current and then it allow the current increasing into it. Is it okay? So what will happen friends? Because of this voltage, <coughs> I'm sorry, there will be current in the circuit. So when the capacitor will start to discharge the charges. There will be current in the circuit and because of this current, this inductor will start to store energy in the form of magnetic field. Yes. Suppose it t equal to, suppose let's take it, t equal to 5 second, all charge across this capacitor is zero. Means we can say the capacitor is discharged now. Is it okay? At the time, the magnetic field across inductor will be high. Or, or, or I can say it's, uh, it's max value. Okay. Now, in the circuit, again, this magnetic field delivered current into the circuit. Because of this magnetic field, now this current will come into the circuit. Because of this current, again, this capacitor will charge. And this will discharge. Once capacitor will charge, again it will discharge. So the discharge and discharging will be continuous in this. If in the ideal case only, because we consider the inductor and capacitor, they are low slaves. So this type of oscillation will get in this circuit. Continuous oscillation without input. We are giving input to circuit? No, we are not giving input to the circuit and we are getting oscillations like this. Because this current, once it will go into this direction, next it will go to this direction. Is it okay, friends? So let's come to the next slide. 
the capacitor loses its charge and energy is simply transferred from capacitor to inductor magnetic field the total energy is still same yeah total energy is same no problem at all at t equal to t1 all the charge has been removed from the capacitor plates and voltage reduces to zero and at current reaches to its maximum value yes so okay now the current of now current for t equal to t is greater than t1 that is the figure here is the figure we are talking about this when current when t is greater than t1 okay let's see what's going on over here the current for t greater than t1 charges c in the opposite direction yes definitely and current decreases yes we know thus lc oscillation takes place yes continuous lc oscillation will be there in the circuit because here the charging discharging charging this charging is continuous okay so both voltage and current are sinusoidal right and interestingly no sinusoidal input was applied and the frequency of oscillation is given for lc circuit is f equal to 1 by 2 pi root lc or omega equal to 1 by root lc i can say is it okay friends and this is hertz this is radian per second okay friends now let's come to this see another technique for producing oscillation is to use positive feedback so we are going to do this one only another technique for producing oscillation is to use positive feedback consider positive feedback consider an amplifier with an input signal v in and output v not this is the circuit for this circuit we have seen that a equal to 1 minus a beta this will be v not by v in of this circuit okay and for the oscillation the must condition will be if they are saying we do not need any input as we have seen in the lc oscillation there were no sinusoidal input but still we were getting the sinusoid output there or sinusoid oscillations there similarly the condition is here also we want same and that will be possible only when a beta equal to 1 into the circuit so what is a friends tell me what is a here this is vf suppose let's take its vf directly connecting over here so a is nothing but v not by vf is it okay if you want to calculate in some questions you are getting in which they are saying or oh, we have to find out the a and beta then we have to multiply and equate to 1 so a is nothing but v not by vf now if we will ask what is beta so beta is vf by v not v by v not definitely is it okay friends now let's come to the the amplifier is inverting amplifier and may be transistorized or fet or op amp yes we discussed this a may be wait a minute over here this is amplifier it may be fet or bjt whatever okay fet or op amp the output is 180 degree out of the phase with input signal so definitely the sign will be negative v not will be minus av in okay friends <clears throat> now now a feedback circuit is added okay fine a is c okay let me draw the diagram over here a beta like this we not v perfectly fine so we introduce beta now what this beta will do <coughs> see because of this amplifier we are getting minus 180 degree minus 180 degree means whatever input we are applying it's going to invert at the output stage this one so again we need minus 180 degree 
सो द टोटल टोटल थिंग विल बी जीरो डिग्री इज इट ओके और थ्री सिक्सटी डिग्री बिकॉज वी नीड मैग्नीट्यूड वन एंड द एंगल इज जीरो डिग्री ओके नाउ अ फीडबैक सर्किट इज एडेड द आउटपुट वोल्टेज इज फेड टू फीडबैक सर्किट वी आर डूइंग दिस द आउटपुट ऑफ द फीडबैक सर्किट इज अगेन वन एटी फेस सिफ्टेड एंड ऑल्सो गेट्स एटेन्यूएटेड मीन्स वी आर सेटिंग दिस बीटा इन सच ए वे दैट वी गेट वन एटी डिग्री फेस शिफ्ट अगेन वी आर गेटिंग वन एटी डिग्री फेस शिफ्ट एट एम्प्लीफिकेशन स्टेज विल गेट वन एटी डिग्री शिफ्ट इन दिस फीडबैक स्टेज सो टोटल इज थ्री सिक्सटी और जीरो ओके दिस इज द मास्ट कंडीशन ऑफ बाकसन क्राइटेरिया ओके फ्रेंड्स दस द आउटपुट फॉर्म दस द आउटपुट फ्रॉम द फीडबैक नेटवर्क इज इन फेस विथ इनपुट सिग्नल वी इन and it can also be made equal to input signal yes definitely now in this case if you are able to make 180 degree phase in forward 180 degree uh, phase in feedback so total angle difference or total angle is zero the phase difference is zero it means v in and v output both are same okay friends now if this is so vf can be connected directly and externally applied signal can be removed and the circuit will continue to generate an output signal okay now vf can be connected directly and externally applied signal can be removed now this vf will be directly connected over here and you will remove this part what they are saying see let me show you over here there is no need of input now because this circuit is closed circuit and it's making its oscillation here the magnitude will be 1 and uh, the phase angle will be 0 or 360 degree so this is vf and this is v not so if anyone will say you calculate a so you will tell uh, you will reply that a is nothing but v not by vf and definitely beta is vf by v not is it okay friends now now come over here the amplifier still has an input but the input is derived from the output amplifier yes because of this amplifier circuit we got input vf this is vf is the input for a okay but this vf how we get this vf by this output we are making this loop right so the output is the output essentially feeds on itself and is continuously regenerated this is positive feedback this is all about the positive feedback the overall amplification from v into vf is 1 from v into vf the amplification should be 1 and the total phase shift is 0 thus the loop gain a beta is equal to 0 what they are saying from v in to v if vf v in to vf the amplification should be 1 is it okay and the phase angle should be 0 this is the must condition for oscillation now when this criteria is satisfied then the closed loop gain is infinity okay we have seen closed loop gain is infinity in that case i'm sorry now v not is a into v error from the diagram we have seen v v error there so a equal to v in plus vf let me show you in the diagram here this c the v not a is a into v error here v not equal to a into v error and this v error is summation of v in plus vf so this v error is v in plus vf fine perfectly fine let me draw that circuit over here a this is error 
plus plus the in beta and like this. Okay, friends. Now we'll see this. What they are saying? V notice a into v error. Okay, no problem. A v in plus v f. Okay, no problem. This v f over here. This v f is beta into v not. V f is beta v not. Okay, perfectly fine. Is it okay? Now you are taking this term to this side. So I'll get a minus a beta of v not. So finally, whatever we discussed earlier is over here. Now if a beta is one, v not by v in will be infinity. Okay. And why in this this is nothing but the external input, no problem at all. Let's check it v in. The criteria a beta is equal to 1 is satisfied only at one frequency. And this is known as the Berghausen criteria. Is it okay friends? The Berghausen criteria is nothing but a b 1 at an angle 0 or 360. I hope it's clear to you. Now oscillation will not be sustained. If at the oscillator frequency a beta less than 1 and a beta greater than 1. Sustain means it should be constant. Constant oscillation we call the sustained oscillation. Okay. But it's going to decay or it's going to increase. These are not sustained oscillations. Figure shows the output for two different oscillations a beta less than 1 and a beta greater than 1. This is for a beta less than 1. The oscillation will decay according to time. After some time it will be 0. And if a beta is greater than 1, the oscillation will increase in this way. Okay friends. Now if a beta is less than unity, then a beta v in is less than v in is it okay definitely because a beta is less than unity so a beta v in is less than v in and the output signal will die out okay are you getting now when the externally applied source is removed wait a minute if a beta is less than unity then a beta v in is less than v in and the output signal will die out when the externally applied source is removed. Yes, absolutely. In the second phase, if a beta is greater than 1, then a b, this is beta, a beta v in is greater than v in, and the output voltage builds up gradually. We have seen this. Now, if a beta is 1, only then output voltage is sine wave, under steady state condition. Is it okay? So A beta is 1 is the only condition for which we will get sinusoidal oscillation, sustained oscillation, continuously. Now this is ideally what practically says, the practically A beta is made slightly greater than unity. So that due to disturbance, the output does not change, but if A beta is equal to 1 and due to some reasons of a beta decreases slightly then the oscillation may die out and the oscillation is still functioning in conclusion all practical oscillations involves see what this point is saying that in practical we made a beta slightly you know greater than one why because due to some disturbances and whatever when this parameter is going to decrease it should not go less than 1. If it will be less than 1, then we have seen for the less than 1, oscillation will decay and after some time it will be die out. So that's why in practically we make A beta greater than 1. So it will compensate the noise effect. Now for the practical oscillation it involves an active device to supply loop gain or negative resistance. Okay. It will give loop gain as well as the negative resistance. 
a frequency selective network to determine the frequency of oscillation. We can select the frequency of oscillation because all parameters are in our hand here. Some type of non-linearity to limit amplitude of oscillation. Now, according to Barghassan criteria, a feedback type oscillator having A beta as a loop gain work if A beta is made slightly greater than 1. Again, this is the theoretical question, one mark question. In the practical oscillator, the A beta should be slight greater than 1, slight less than 1, equal to 1 exactly, or equal to 0. Now, it's up to you. Now, we'll start the first RC phase. Before that, I think you should take one example over here. Let me take one example. Let me draw the problem over here. The problem is given. Wait a minute. So, the circuit is... Wait a minute. The circuit given... Open circuit... Fine. V naught over here R one R two circuit closed negative feedback but actual feedback is positive feedback. Here we are introducing beta. Perfectly fine. This is the circuit like this. Now, in the question given, beta equal to 1 by 6 at an angle 0, means Vf by V0 is given, because this is Vf. Then find relation between R1 and R2 for sustained oscillation. The condition is, the relation The relation between R1 and R2 for sustained oscillation. Okay, means constant oscillation. When we'll get the oscillation, sustained oscillation in the circuit, when A beta is equal to 1 at an angle 0, this is condition. Is it okay? Beta is given 1 by 6 at an angle 0. What's your requirement? Your requirement is A beta should be 1. A into beta is given 1 by 6 at an angle 0, sorry, 1. So, A should be 6. Is it okay? This is angle 0, this is angle 0, finally angle 0. A should be 6 at an angle 0, then only it's possible. Now, what's A? Tell me. Let me clear some path, then I'll show you. A is, or A should be 6. How to calculate 6 now? The condition is, your A should be 6 at an angle 0. So, for this circuit, the A is, let's take A is, we discussed earlier, V0 by Vf. Is it okay? A is V0 by Vf, and beta is opposite of it, Vf by V0. Then only the multiplication of these two will be 1, right? So, this this is the Vf, this Vf will be here, here also. So, if you will solve it, you will get, let me show you, or you can take it like this, this is the non-inverting terminal, right? If you apply the input at the non-inverting terminal, the gain is always 1 RF by R1, where RF is the feedback resistance. Feedback resistance is R2 over here. So, 1 plus R2 by R1. This is your gain. And 1 plus R2 by R1 should be 6. What it means? R2 by R1 should be 5. What it means, your R2 should be equal to 5 times of R1. 
So this is the relation. So in this circuit, if you'll make it R2 and R1, the relation in this way, when you will keep, this is 5 kilo, so R2 should be 25 kilo. This should be the relation. Okay, of course, there will be some another parameters also, but ultimately the relation between R1 and R2 in this way. Then only we can expect oscillation. Which type of oscillation? Sustained oscillations. Okay, friends, so this is the relation. I hope the point is clear to you. Now let's come to the RC phase shift. What is RC phase shift? This is one kind of oscillation in which this AV, this is the inverting amplifier. This will provide 180 degree phase shift. And this circuit is the RC phase shift. Means this circuit will provide 180 degree phase shift again. So total, because we have to maintain the condition of 0 or 360 degree. Is it okay? A beta, A beta should be equal to, I'm sorry, A beta should be equal to 1. 0 at an angle 360 degree. So definitely this is the inverting amplifier. It will provide 180 degree. Now this circuit will provide 180 degree. 60 degree will be provided by this. Again 60 by this. Again 60 by this. So in this way, in the series way, we are getting 180 degree in RC phase shift. Why we are calling it RC phase shift? See, here we are using RC connections. Or in the beta. This is entire thing is beta, right? This entire thing is beta, okay? So this beta is found by RC network. See, in this circuit, if you'll care, uh, if you'll observe this carefully, you'll find out you are having only R and C components. So that's why we are calling it RC phase shift. And this RC is providing phase shift to us, okay? But this one we use at the low frequency only. So at low frequencies, around 100 kilohertz or less, registers are usually employed to determine the frequency oscillation. Is it okay? If you need the low frequency, like up to 100k, so in the circuit, you can use register. Okay, but if you need high, higher frequency than this, you will be, or you will use LC network there. Because LC network is used for higher frequencies. And RC network or LR network is used for lower frequencies. Okay friends, I think it's clear to you. Now, various circuits are used in the feedback circuit including ladder network. Okay. Now, this is the circuit given over here. Now, let's see in the next. It's given a block diagram of a later type RC phase shift oscillation is shown in the figure. It consists of three resistor R and C capacitors. Three resistor R and three capacitors. We, we have seen just now. If the phase shift through the amplifier is 180 degree, then oscillation may occur at the frequency where the RC network produces an additional 180 degree phase shift. I think this point is clear to you. So this is the relation we'll get when we'll solve it. So I'll do for you, okay? See, so for this circuit, we need to calculate two things. Because our condition is A beta should be equal to A at an angle 0. 1 at an angle 0. So A is here, we have AV. And AV is nothing but V0 in by VX. Okay, perfectly fine. What about this? This is very difficult to find out, but one by one we'll find out it. Okay. Let's forget this circuit. Now we have this much of the circuit only. So what is the voltage over here? Let's take it V1. Let's take it V1. So V1 is nothing but R into V0. R into V0 divided by divide by R plus 1 by SC. Is it okay? So this is V1 and V0 relation. Okay, friends? Similarly, now, suppose this is V2 and this is Vx. Now, what will be the relation between V2 and V1? Will it be V2 equal to R V1 R plus 1 by SC? 
where v1 if we'll keep this value so this will be two times of v0 but you are having three stages so finally you will be having three times of this particular so beta is vx by v0 and it's coming r divided by r plus 1 by sc three times okay friends this is your beta now put this value in the condition what is the condition the condition is a beta equal to 1 okay friends and for this we have two things also r1 and feedback rf for this okay friends this is the kind of situation like this so this is your vx now a beta is 1 this is beta what is a a is rf by r1 rf by r1 and this will be minus rf by r1 because at no inverting terminal we have input over here so this will be or this should be equal to 1 so this is kind of homework for you right ultimately you have to open it and finally you have to compare it okay so when you will compare it you will get over here let me show over here only you will get the frequency is 1 by 2 pi rc under root 6 2 pi rc this is the frequency of oscillation and this frequency of oscillation will be 1 by 2 pi rc root 6 normal frequency we have seen 1 by 2 pi rc but here root 6 is coming extra root 6 is coming because of this circuitry okay so this is the frequency of oscillation for rc network is it okay to you now the relation between rf and r1 rf and r1 we introduced over here rf and r1 so the relation between these two is coming 29 means for rc phase shift rf is 29 times of r1 so ultimately what we are getting two things for the rc phase shift this is the circuit okay and for the RC phase shift, the frequency of oscillation is 1 by 2 pi <coughs> RC root 6. I'm sorry. <coughs> is it okay friends? You can remember in the RC phase shift, the root 6 is coming in denominator. If you want to remember, I'm giving you a short trick. This is RC phase shift. Make this 6 and make this root. So, root 6 is coming over here. Is it okay? Now, this is over. Now, the another thing is the relation between RF and R1. Okay. So, RF is equal to 29 times of R1. See, 29 times. Again, you can remember it by your RC only. This is R. This is C. Okay. So, if you remove this one from R, it will become 2. Father remembering purpose I'm showing you, okay? So it is become 2, okay? Perfectly fine. And this will become 9. This is 29. Is it okay? 29. This is one of the methods to remember, okay? It depends on you. Because in the examination we have to deal with this only. Okay? This is not IES exam in which we have to solve it. This is the relation. The frequency of oscillation is 1 by 2 pi rc root 6 and the gain of it feedback circuit becomes 1 by 29. Is it okay? Now, now let me check if we have any problem over here. So if I will talk in terms of circuit, so circuit will be like A is 29 
providing 180 degree phase shift like this. So beta will be 1 by 29 providing 180 degree phase shift like this. It will be circuit. The circuit will be like this. Because the loop gain should be 1 and phase angle should be 360 degree. 1 at an angle 0 or 360 degree. Okay friends. Now from the next lecture onwards we will start the vein bridge oscillator. Okay friends. So we'll meet in the next class. Till then, take care and bye.